Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is going to be featuring the Spellbinders um, Small Die of the Month Club Kit. And this is actually also for the Spellbinders uh, July Club Kit Blog Hop. I'm using a sentiment from the Clear Stamps and Dies kit. Um, you may have seen that I made um, a video with those earlier in the month with the little popsicles. I will link to that if you're interested in seeing. Um, if you're not familiar with the blog hop, um, I will link it below if you're watching on YouTube. And Spellbinders is generously giving away three different $25 gift cards to commenters along the hop. Plus, there's a ton of inspiration if you do decide to pick up this kit um, or any of the other July kits. So yeah, I would recommend that you check it out. Here, all I'm doing is I am, I've taken out all the dies. I have some uh, pattern paper packs. And I just wanted to show you real quick before we get into it, we're going to be doing some paper piecing and some ink blending. But in this particular paper pack, you can see um, that they already have a beach scene laid out there. And so you literally would not even have to create a background to make a scene. Like you could just trim down that paper to, um, you know, your A2 or whatever size you were going for. Um, but I am going to do some ink blending to make my own background, but I am going to use pattern papers to cut out my dies. Why am I doing that? Well, I think that it's really easy if you have good pattern papers. And I do like the six by six packs because, uh, well, there's a couple reasons, but all the colors match. So everything, you know what I mean? You don't have to spend time trying to find the perfect, um, you know, matching colors. They're in a set together, so they all work really well. Um, but then there's also, there's some details that you just can't get um, with markers or colored pencils like you can with a print. For example, that floral on the right I'm going to use for my um, bathing suit. How cute is that? I would totally wear that bathing suit. It's adorable. Um, but I wouldn't be able to get that with me trying to color it in myself. I just wouldn't be able to get that level of detail on something so small. The other thing that's really nice for it is using like specialty papers. So for the flip-flops, the little thongs of the flip-flops, and then the handle of the bag, as well as the ribbons um, for the hat, I'm going to use this uh, glitter paper. And I mean, it's just a super fun way to add some extra shine that's really easy. Um, the one I'm using is tonic, I think, and it die cuts beautifully. So I chose to use this um, flower paper, this tone-on-tone -tone flower paper for my hat. And the nice thing about the 6x6 pads is it has a matching um, paper on the back that is, it's like the same color, but it's a different design. It's a smaller design, which 6x6 pads typically are, which is much more user-friendly for card makers. Um, you know, the 12x12 12 12 sheets sometimes have really big prints, uh, which are great for scrapbookers, but not so great for card making. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to use that reverse side with the same color, but different pattern for the base of my flip-flops. And then this little basket weave was totally perfect for this little basket. So cute. And then I'm going to cut the liner. The liner and two stripes um, are included in one die. I decided not to stripe my bag, but it's really easy if you choose to. Um, but the handle for the bag is also with the thong of the flip-flops. And then there's three kind of... Um, different layers to the beach towel. And I really, really like how it cuts, like when it cuts it out, it debosses um, some of the guidelines for the towel. So that way when I'm putting it together, I know where to line it up at. So I chose a smaller pattern like teal for the base of it. And then I couldn't find a teal in my stash to match. So I actually just picked this gradient one out of the same paper pack. And I'm just going to put the stripes on the portion that's a solid teal and cut those out. For the little fringes on the edge, I just chose another, um, it's like a darker teal out of that same pad that matches. For my little body, you can see I'm cutting it out of white, and that's because I fully intend to Copic color it. I did not have a 
um, card stock that match and doing a little bit of copa coloring allows me to add a little bit of shading to kind of like step my scene up a notch and I will add a little bit of copic shading to some of my um, pattern paper pieces that's also always an option if you don't have alcohol markers or you know markers whatever and you could do that with ink blending also um, so you guys know that I never build my cards first, you know this. So now at this point, I've taken all of my pieces parts, I've run it through by Platinum 6, and then this is what I am working with left over. Here you can see those debossed lines, that's going to make my stripes really easy to match up. I don't often use, um, tweezers. When I am crafting, usually I just use my fingers and make it work. Um, but some of these pieces were very thin, so I chose to use my tweezers. Um, they were very helpful. I'm not, I mean, you can use any tweezers that you have. These ones are specifically for crafting, um, but it just makes it a little easier to hold on to and to get glue on without getting the glue all over your fingers because some of those stripes are a little bit thin. These are definitely the smallest pieces. Um, in this particular uh, die of the month, in this particular kit. How about that? How about we say that? Um, but with the tweezers, I was able to get them on pretty easily with no issues. Um, so yeah, we're just going to go through and start building our card. I made a whole, I mean, it's only got the stamped sentiment. Everything else is die cuts. Aren't you proud of me? I mean, it's really, for some people, this is like a Tuesday, but for me... For me, this is an accomplishment, and I'm going to celebrate it. I think this scene ended up coming out really cute. I'm very jealous of her sitting on the beach. Um, I imagine she's got a book in that bag and maybe an iced coffee. Like, you know, I'm just... We have a pool, and I'm very grateful for that. But we have not been to the beach in years now because we had planned on going on vacation, but then COVID hit, and all of that. So, I mean, we really haven't been, I don't think, when was the last time we were on vacation? 2019? It was before we were even married. Um, because we never, like for our honeymoon, we got married in COVID. So we couldn't go really anywhere. We couldn't leave the state without having to quarantine. So we ended up going to Mommy Bay, which by the time that we, because we got married on September 5th, um, which this year falls on Labor Day. We knew that was a risk. We knew that. Um, but everything was closed because it was after Labor Day by the time we were going. So all of the things that would be interesting to do in summer closed. Um, so I'm jonesing for a little bit of beach time. I don't think that that's going to happen for us this year. Um, just with all the things that we have going on, uh, you know, little Miss Caitlin, it's almost time for, I can't even believe it. It's almost time for Peanut to go back to school. He goes back to school in the middle of August. So we basically have like a month to go and he's in school. If you can even believe it. Where does the time go? So fast. Um, but anyway, so I went adventuring today. This is also an accomplishment for me. Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, because I've been, since I started working from home full time, um, I still do. I know sometimes people get confused. They're like, aren't you dispatching anymore? I am, but it's part time. And when I dispatch, um, like when I leave the house, it's typically a night shift that I'm covering. So by the time I'm leaving, it's after my kids are in bed. It's like 11 o'clock at night till three in the morning or six in the morning. And I'm not going anywhere and there aren't any people except for my coworkers. Um, so today I put on real people clothes. I brushed my hair. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And I did my makeup, a full face of makeup. I haven't worn a full face of makeup in probably, mm, probably since the last time we got Caitlin's pictures taken. So three months, two and a half, three months crazy. I know. And I used to wear full face makeup every day, like get dressed in real people clothes because I was going out into the world and that's what I did. Um, but now I don't go out into the world. I just, <laughs> I'm just home. So why did I go out into the world adventuring? Well, Linda, um, Linda actually lives relative, she lives within 25 minutes of me and 
she follows me on um, YouTube and Instagram and had reached out to me. We've chatted some. We have a couple of common interests outside of just paper crafting. She used to be a, a police dispatcher as well. And so we've chatted here and there. Um, we've been friends online for years, but never got to meet in person. And so she had reached out to me and asked me if I would be willing to donate a card um, for a retreat that she's having this weekend. We have to talk about the card real quick. So something of note here, the thongs have a left and a right. I did not realize they had a left and a right until I started gluing them down. And I put that first one down and I was like, this doesn't really match up. What's going on? Well, what's going on is I was trying to put the left thong on the right flip-flop. And fortunately, my glue hadn't set yet. So I just snatched it up off there with my tweezers, put it on the correct flip-flop and then put the other one down. Um, so that's just something to note while you're building them. Um, and then there's another thing with the hat. So when I started to put together the hat, I didn't use these dies are so dimensional on their own. I didn't even have to use any foam tape. Like these are just cardstock stacked on cardstock and they look amazing because the dies are so well done. But when you put this little top portion of the hat together, there leaves a little lip. Like one is smaller than the other and it leaves a little bit of a lip at the bottom. That lip is for your hat band. But if you're going to use the ribbons, like the ribbons blowing in the wind, don't glue down the top of your hat, um, like that little teeny tiny piece, until you put the ribbons down. I didn't realize it at the time that I was doing this, um, and I did end up having to kind of peel up the edge to tuck my ribbons underneath it, but it doesn't make any sense if you can't tuck the ribbons under, and um, I just was kind of like risking it because I didn't put the ribbons on there. So now with most of our things put together, I am going to turn my attention over here to the Copic coloring. Um, you can obviously use whatever skin tones you want. I just went with what my go-to traditional skin tones that I use here on my channel um, because that's... I that's just what works for me. These are the ones that I know. I do try to use other skin tones and you can use whatever makes sense for your family. Um, but the this is what I grabbed. So for me, it's an E50, an E00, an E11, and an E04. I'm just going to go in. Well, the way that the person is positioned, um, they're kind of like leaning back. You're just going to see their back. So I knew that the shadows would be on the inside of the arms, like tucked closer to the body. And then there would be shadows on the outside of the body and then up from the bottom. So that is where I'm adding the shading, except for my darkest color. I'm just going through with the th first three colors, blending them out. I'm trying to make sure that I leave a highlight this girl is very clearly pretty pale, like myself. Um, so I'm just I'm just putting down those three colors. And the reason that I'm only putting down those three colors is I wanted to be able to get more realistic shadows. And so I needed to put on my bathing suit before I added the darkest color. And you'll see once we get this glued down here, that it's going to give me a guideline for where the darkest shadows should go. So not that there's no shadows here, there is, but using that darkest color is really going to kind of bump up the dimension. I was just very careful that I didn't color on any of my pattern paper. I just went around this top U shape and then just did two diagonal lines underneath. And then for the arms, I'm going to do just the slightest little bit on the inside of the arms and at the wrist where it's bent. And then with the same three colors that I used before, I'm just going to go in and blend them out. And even though it's just adding that one color, it adds so much more dimension to make it look like there's actual shadows. Now, did I, I mean, I didn't take this crazy. I could have added a shadow where her hat is, um, you know, and all of that stuff. I, I didn't get that crazy with it. I just wanted enough dimension around the bathing suit to make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, but you don't, you certainly don't have to do this either. Here's the part where I realized that I need to put my ribbons on, I think. Um, 
No. Oh, I'm adding shading to the hat. That's what I'm doing. So this is one of those ones that I just chose a color that matched my paper pretty closely. And then I'm just going to do one little like U shape around the top of the hat and then one around the brim just to add a little bit more shading. And then for the sandals, same thing, just kind of around the thong area. I'm going to put in a little shadow so, because they would cast a shadow since they're not flat to the flip-flop. For the little um, bag, I'm just going to use, again, a very close color, just slightly darker, to add some shading along the sides and the bottom of the bag, uh, and just kind of blend that into the center with some flicking motion, just to give it a little bit more dimension. Um, and now we're going to get to the part of the hat where I realized that I kind of got to pull it up a little bit to get the ribbons underneath. Um, so, yeah, so... Linda had asked me if I would donate this card, and we had been trying to get together, but then Caitlin went in the hospital, and so then she reached back out to me and was like, hey, I know you're crazy, I could pick it up from Eric, um, you know, at the police department, but I'd really like to meet you, so we were finally able to do that today. I met her at a Dunkin' Donuts, I know you're shocked, uh, because I love coffee. And it was lovely to meet another crafter in person. She was so super nice, um, so I took her my donated card, and then I took her a regular card. These here are the um, Slimline, what are they? These are the A's one, the Precision Layering um, Mini Slimline dies from Spellbinders. I have the A, there's also a B. I originally did the like one, two, and it was just not enough of a frame to frame in my card. So I did one and then the third one in, and that gave me a good enough frame to go ahead and um, cut that out. Do you need to frame this in? No, you don't, but I like a frame. I think it looks cleaner and nicer. Um, so I cut a secondary piece that was the same size as my frame to build my background on. I'm just going to use this post-it note tape to create a horizon. You could do a lot of things with this. You could do it at an angle. You could do it with a wave. I just kept it super simple because I wanted that beautiful pattern paper on the dies to kind of be the star of the show. So I'm just going to do really simple horizon lines just straight across. Um, so I'm masking off right now my sand and my sky. And this little strip, this little what half an inch strip is going to be my ocean. In order to make sure that there was a difference between um, the blue of the water and the blue of the sky, I chose to go in a more teal direction. So I'm going to fill the whole thing in with salvage patina and then add a little bit of shading with peacock feathers and mermaid lagoon. Three colors was it was. It was way too much. Uh, totally unnecessary, but I'm over the top and it is what it is. So um, sometimes you just have to know that about yourself and uh, accept it and be fine with it. Um, so yeah, so I went to go see Linda and we chatted for a while and that was super nice and I'm excited for somebody to win her raffle basket and get my card. Um, and then um, I gave her a card as well. And then I went and stopped by and saw Eric at work because he was right down the street. And so I got to see some of my old co-workers, not a lot because it was during the day. Um, so, you know, nobody's really hanging around. So I just got to see one or two people and it was nice to, I actually saw the guy who's doing my job after he took my job after I quit. Um, and he's doing really well and still enjoying it. And so that's all good news. And then from there, I had to stop by Joanne Fabrics because if you can believe it, I was almost out of Tombow Mono Multi Glue. I know. How did I run out of glue? I have no idea how this has happened to me. Um, back to the card. So for the sky, I'm not going to touch the ocean horizon. I'm just going to blend down close to it, but leave like a little barrier of white. I'm still going to get a very clear sky look. Um but it's going to leave that water intact so they aren't really mixing. And then I just did Salty Ocean Blueprint Sketch and um, a little bit of Chip Sapphire to make it just a smidge darker, like a, a pretty blue day. No, did I use the Chip Sapphire? I'm lying to you. I didn't even use it. I just used these two. Um, so it's just like a really nice blue. I am going to remove the one for the sand and then I do have to put it back down. And 
posted, like, I'm just going to be honest with you, masking paper does not like wet distress ink. You can see him having a hard time getting it to stick. But if you start ink blending, if you're impatient like me, and you start ink blending on the tape and then move over it, instead of trying to Uh, ink blend on the edge and then bring it to the masking tape, you're continually pushing it flat with your ink blending tool. So you really don't have any issues. It's when you try, like in this case, we're going left to right. If I tried to come right to left, I would pick that tape right up with my ink blender and then I would have a problem. Alternatively, you can just wait until your distress ink is dry um, so that way it will stick again, but just while it's wet, it has a hard time. So this is my beach. It's a little bit dark. It's a little bit of a dark beach for me, um, but I think I'm okay with it. Uh, it does lighten up as it dries just a little bit, and we have so many, um, things that we're gonna put on there that it's not really that big of a deal. So here I have my whole scene set up, but I need to stamp my sentiment. Again, this sentiment is from the Clear Stamp and Die Kit this month, um, and it just says sunshine and good times, which I thought was super cute because that's exactly what sitting on the beach with your bag is, sunshine and good times. Um, so I just stamped that down, and then I'm going to go about building the card. I didn't use any um, foam adhesive for adhering my pieces parts because, again, Spellbinders did such a fantastic job designing these that there's already so much dimension. I didn't even feel the need to add anything. So I'm going to put this frame down flat as well. Again, this is not something that you need per se, but I just really like a clean, framed-in look, and it almost made the card look like a pretty beach picture, which I enjoyed. So I went and saw Eric at work, saw some co-workers after that I went to Joanne's to get my glue, and then listen to where I went. You're never going to believe it. I went to the post office. Yes, I did. I didn't send my husband. I went myself because... I'm adulting. Good for me. So I had some things that I needed to mail, um, and it's much more difficult. When Eric was on the road, it was real easy for him to get over to the post office. It's a little bit more challenging now that he's on day shift. So I did have some things I needed to mail out, and I spent the morning after I took Caitlin to daycare uh, getting all of those things together. Um, so I got up, I got dressed, I did my hair, I did my makeup, and then I went out into the world like an adult. And while this is not an accomplishment for most people in the last however many, when did I go? When did I, when did I quit my job? April, May, June, July. So this is three months in. At three months in to working full-time from home, part-time out of the house, this is an accomplishment for me and I'm going to be okay with it. I'm, I'm good. Uh, so now I should be good for another three months or so, right? No, probably not. Um, but yeah, so here I'm just again putting the finishing putting the card together. The little ribbons, um, I do want to note that you do, if you want two ribbons, you got to cut them out twice. Um, there's only one ribbon die, so you just got to cut them out twice. And I like how it kind of flows over the frame. I think that's really cute and kind of whimsical. And then I'm going to just tack my flip flops. I've tucked them into the bag, um, but I'm just going to tack them down on the underside and then glue them. Um, to the card. I'm just kind of rearranging them how I want them to go in the bag um, and then sticking that there. The paper packs that I used, if you're interested in those or those particular um, color combinations, I-, I will link them below and in YouTube so that you can see them. And then out, the only other thing that I did, and this was just to kind of set it apart from the other distress inking, is I did go in with a clear glitter pen and then just put it on the water. So like the w- water would be reflecting the sunshine. So I just put it in that little area and then that's the whole card. So um, I think it's super cute. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about die cutting scenes versus stamping scenes. I'd be interested to know that. Um I hope that you guys will head over and join the blog hop um, just to see all the fun inspiration there. Thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.